and welcome back to Bookkeepers Bootcamp. I'm here with Jay Wood and we're joined by Becky Bridges from May I Finance. Hi, Hi Becky, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me on, ladies. Oh, it's always lovely to have a chat with you. We were just saying before we came live, it's just like having a chat with friends. So um, yes. it will be like that. Um, thanks everyone who's joining. Let us know if you're watching this live or if you're watching the replay. It's great to see you here. Um, it's one of our busy boot camp days and we've just been back to back with sessions and we love it. We love the energy of days like today. Um, Becky, do you want to start by telling us about your um, about your practice and how you got started? Yes. Um, so I didn't originally... Um plan to go into having a bookkeeping practice. Um, I blame that on you guys. <laughs> so I left, I was in corporate uh, in management accounts for 10 plus years with the NHS um, and then went into corporate industry with the American company. And then during the pandemic, um, which I think a lot of a lot of parents and mom that I'm finding felt the same, I just came to a um, the top that my, my cup started to overfill the homeschooling I was still working full-time my hubby was still working full-time because he works in gas who was a you know a key key industry and I just I just had enough so I, I'd had a lot of years of wanting to own my own business work for myself many moms do that are needing the flexibility um, especially when the kids are young and they're ill and the school runs so during um, September 2020, I think, um, it, on an emotional, it was an emotional decision from the kitchen table. I just had had enough. I wrote my notice out and bought a web domain. Uh, and that was the start of the journey, really. But I originally, well, I still do that now. Um, it was business consulting. So I like to fix things. People's accounts that were messy, people getting in trouble with tax because they'd not done their accounts and the books properly. Uh, generally people come to me for that kind of things anyway whether it's friends or friends of friends um, and I, knew, I was very comfortable in that area love tech love spreadsheets um, and I kind of have a way of being able to explain it in a layman's terms so that's where I started in September 2020 very quickly I got the bug and I March 21 I incorporated the business um, with one client I just had one client and um, registered for that not long after because in my mind I thought I wanted to make this work. Um, uh, it was scary, you know, none of it's been easy. Um, but that's originally where it started. And then the practice side of things came from, I mean, you've heard this story before. I accidentally fell across the six figure bookkeeper group um, through some homework on a course I'd bought looking for my ideal client um and immediately fell in love and then my brain went from the consulting side to how on earth can I set, can I set up a bookkeeping practice and that was August 21 when was the bookkeeping around that time? the book the bookkeepers boot camp yeah that was my first boot camp with you guys and I've never looked back since that's that's where the practice started for me around that time August ish um and, and went straight into the success program so it's it's been a whirlwind and we're only in what june june 23 so i'm coming up to my third year in business um and how much things have changed already and i've got you know the two kids i've got, got my i've got a team my daughter's just entered a teen years and my son uh, is just 11. you know that comes with its own challenges of that parenting so it's easier when they were younger than when they were younger but i kind of wish i found this earlier you know it's hindsight's a great thing isn't it where I wish even just five years ago I made this decision um, and, and that's where I am at the minute just growing and pivoting because that's the, my personality style as well um, so yeah it's but, but your journey is very different and this is what I love this is why it's so good to talk about what your journey is because mm -hmm. you you assume that um you left corporate management accounts and set mm -hmm. up a practice now yes. and we, but you didn't. You set up a consulting business in between. Mm. And so you've gone through so many that the mindset shifts and the the jumps and the you know feeling the fear and doing it anyway kind of yes. things you've had to go through yes. because you were in corporate, you were doing management accounts, and then you set up a consultancy business. So am I right in thinking you you 
you stopped one and started afresh you didn't have a client you didn't build up a client but because lots of people ask us the question how do you build a business while being employed while being a parent while in lockdown yes. all these things that were happening so mm -hmm. you do that you you i stopped yeah we did um we did a we did some financials you know sit sit down and how long could i go without um bringing a salary in however the 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 flip side to that was most of my salary was childcare fees. We were paying over a thousand pound a month in childcare fees just so that I could go to work. Um, it wasn't even 30 hours. I think it was maybe 25 hours a week, but because of the distance, you know, so there, there was that element. So when we actually thought about, you know, the, the income that I needed to bring home, we had a period of time where, yes, there were cutbacks, but we'd be financially okay paying the bills for a certain period of time if I could get no work whatsoever. Um, I was fortunate in that. I say fortunate, I'd, I'd worked for this, but my employer, when I handed my notice in, actually asked me to take the work with me and they were my first client. So we, we had a, an arrangement where I pretty much just priced the work and, and did I'm still doing their work now so in the end I didn't actually have to walk away with that gap but we had done the work before um, and I would have done and I did that with the NHS when I left corporate I, I handed my notice in um, there before I'd even got a job because I think it kind of gives you I know it's a scary thing but when you know you have to do something and you've got to go out there and find work it gives you a different feeling you've got bills you've got you know you've got the kids so some people say it's risky and, and a bit careless. I just think it's a calculated risk. And we've done we've done that work before. But for me, it was severing the ties. Um, because when something's new, my mind wouldn't have been on the job. If I'd have tried to run and set up my own business, it's interesting, it's new, it's exciting. I couldn't imagine then getting in the car and going to work for somebody else, you know, on their time. So um that was that worked for me um and that's that's why I did it that way and I'm glad I did you know I, I still do some things different which is kind of where I want to help other people um with that but I'm I'm, I'm happy I did it the way that I did it and I think that's why it grew so quick because it was clean and that and I had the, it was all my time um and I didn't have to spend that time anywhere else so yeah that's exciting it's scary but I'm glad I did it that way yeah, that's really interesting. Um, what I re when I left employment to go all in on the Six Figure Bookkeeper business, I remember having a conversation with James Ashford, who was talking about burning the boats. And, uh, you know, it's, you have to sometimes just decide that you're going to draw a, a line in the sand and go yes. all in. And it is, um, it is terrifying, yes. absolutely terrifying yeah. to um, leave employment. But, it, but what the thing about business is, you can't unknow what you know about business like once you know how to run a business yeah. and you understand how to make money and how to sell and you know what this is going to actually look like that doesn't ever go away from you so mm -hmm. you know earlier in earlier on today when we've been talking about um we were talking to Kim Searle earlier about uh, like fear of success and yes. fear of like things going wrong and the thing is even if the worst happened, you still have all of those skills. Yes, so skills. I feel like it's a development journey. Absolutely. It's important to plan. And that's why when we work with people in the six month success program, we say, what are your goals? We start with actually baseline. What do you need to happen in your family, your family finances? What do you need your business to do for you? But you, everyone has the ability to have those conversations about household finances and how is this going to yeah. look? Yeah. And what you want out of that. And I think that's the bit, the bit where, when I say I wish I'd done some things differently, knowing what I know now from um, doing the success program, I kind of went into business with the mindset, like I think a lot of people do, you, you, your main aim is to go out and get work and get clients. But by doing that before you know what you want out of your business, how many hours you want to be working, all that kind of stuff, that's actually made it harder to backtrack from those original mistakes that I made by just rushing out and trying to just take any work that came my way, really. Um, so that's that's something I'd, I'd do differently. If, if I could have my time again with, you know, that area, that area I'd just do it a bit slower and um, make sure that I'd got everything in place 
the things that I know now, you know, in hindsight, the things that I've got in place. And a lot of that is also a mindset. Um, my mindset, my money mindset, you've just mentioned that fear of success. I'm still working through that. This is not a perfect um, business situation that I'm in. I'm, I've still got personal development that I need to be working on. And I think that will always be there. The thought of being visible online for me. Um, you know, this is, a, I feel like this is a safe space, but going out there with people that I don't know, um, that still frightens me. Um, and it's it's a big word, but yeah, it makes me heart palpitations thinking about that. So this is just one thing at a time and having that supportive community is just, I don't, I wouldn't, I, w I don't think I, we wouldn't be having this conversation. I don't think if, if I'd not gone through that journey with you guys really, and, and all the other people in the community as well. Because um, they bring out the best, and you know, let you see, you, you know, you identify the worst bits of yourself as well, and what you can improve on. So, yeah, it's it's been an interesting journey, but now it's exciting. I feel it's exciting now. It's getting to that point where I'm ready to have an adult business. <laughs> Absolutely, a grown up business. What we all a grown up want. business. It feels Absolutely. it feels like a grown up business. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but we have to go through these things. And do you know what? The beauty of it, the beauty of when we, you know, have little trip ups or we don't do things perfectly first time, but we learn from them and recognize it means we can do this and help our clients the, the same and yes. recognize that. And that helps us add so many layers to our service, whatever our service looks like. And and I can see in the comments that you being so honest and talking about your situation and how you made that jump and the reasons you did is helping other people. Mm -hmm. So you sharing that. And that's why it's so important for us to bring people with different experiences, different backgrounds, different reasons. Um, yeah. Someone will relate and go, oh, I'm in that mm -hmm. situation. Oh, you've done that. Oh, that gives me a bit yeah. of confidence to do the same. So in yes. the business that you have now, what does your business look like? Do you have a niche? How long have you got? <laughs> You've got an ideal client? Yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, you'll already know my personality type and my mind runs at 100 miles an hour. It always has. I used to think it was because I was a mom, but now the kids are a bit older and they don't need that constant running around. I think it's just my personality type. And that was one of the biggest things um, for me to realise that it's okay to to have all these things going on as long as that you know obviously we can manage them um and that that's kind of what we want so i've got still running with some of the consulting clients that just keep coming back um so my, but my time now my capacity is full to where i want it to be you know i could work 40 hours a week but i don't want to work 40 hours a week i currently work between 20 and 25 on client working kind of in the business um my mind never stops. So I've got the, the consultancy side and then the bookkeeping. Um, it's more, I've got three bigger clients at the minute. And again, that's something that comes with the confidence. They're three bigger limited companies that um, I would have never touched. I wouldn't have had the confidence to do that before. Um, James, you know, is the, we've all got James Ashford quotes floating around in our head, you know, choose your hard. So, and then I've got self-assessment clients coming through. Um, and the original idea was once I'd finished with the consultancy side, going in and fixing, I was constantly getting asked that, you know, because I'd stopped HMRC knocking on the door, directors being struck off. They then want me to carry on and do the bookkeeping, which is why I decided that having a bookkeeping practice would be a fantastic idea. Now I'm addicted to that side of things. And I think the consultancy is a... Bit. I've not had any new clients since probably mid last year for the for the consulting side. They're all bookkeeping clients, um, so that just shows where you put your focus. You know, and those clients come in, and just self assessment. And I've not had to advertise. It's all been word of mouth. So that's that's a big knowing that I can be where I am now, and just people talk about and recommend me to other people. Um, that's good for the confidence you know if, when I do start advertising and being more visible what will that look like mm -hmm. uh, the downside the downside to kind of uh, and I think it's a personality type at the beginning I didn't know how to say no do you know I mentioned you just want to get the work in and you want to get the new clients I hadn't then even really thought about niching um 
And even when, you know, you guys started talking about, oh, like, well, no, I'm not, I'm not turning work down. I need the money. I'm not big enough to have a niche yet. Um, probably another mistake that I made. It, I should have just really thought about. I was too fixated on the, to me, before I really understood what niching was, I thought it might have been an industry. I was thinking, do I want to work with builders? Do I want to work with hairdressers? But now I think I've got a niche. And what that looks like to me is working parents you know, it's not a particular industry. Um, it's not a particular gender. I've been a working parent, made the mistakes. I know the struggles. I'm still a working parent. Um, the, you know, the, the hubby has got his own business. So we're still in that mix of things. And I feel like I connect with those people. So if we're talking about niche, I'd say that they're the people that I've started to attract because I've been more authentically me. Um, I mean, you'll know Joe and Jill, I'm sure she'll be watching this or watching it later. We had a conversation about how my ideal client will want me to show up. If I'd have not had that conversation with Jill, I might be sat here in a blazer with my hair straightened and a face full of makeup because you kind of think that that's how people want to see you. And that's not who I am. I wear cami tops, I have a mom bun. Um, you know, I feel quite relaxed just to pop home and, and sit and have a chat with you and I feel like I'm more being more myself and I've noticed almost immediately that I'm attracting more people like me and that helps me help them you know so rather than have Dave the builder that's got no kids down the pub wanting me to do, you know get as much tax relief as he can I'm attracting mums that want to know how I did it how I got over it it's all like you said it's all transferable skills what you do at home affects what you do at work and what you do at work affects what you do at home. And I feel like that's what I can offer. So that's my niche. So that. whether that's right, whether that's right or wrong way to pick a niche, I feel but like the way best. that you feel comfortable to get yourself out there. And you were talking about that, like fear of um, visibility and actually if you it, to make this as easy as possible, mm. we don't need to pretend to be somebody else. We just need to go and be ourselves and that, that's what that's about so it's much easier when you're not thinking oh how do I prepare myself to yes. be visible yeah. but it's just I, I just am myself but just I do it on the internet yes yeah. and that's what I make that clear by by doing that your clients know who you are before they walk through the door the like I mean as you can hear I'm from I'm from Sheffield you know up north when I worked for the NHS even in Sheffield I used to almost have to prepare to put a different persona on when you sat in a board meeting with what I thought were very intelligent people. Um, I felt like I had to be a different person. So that's been a massive mind shift, even from raising the children being young. Make sure you put your S's on the end of yes. And you know, it's not yeah, it's yes. Um, I spent a lot of time trying to be what I thought I needed to be, to be successful um, and this journey with you guys has just blown all that out of the water. So I suppose that's, I need to thank you for that, really. Does that sound cheesy? I don't want that to sound cheesy, but, you know, I know it's it, it's all it's all part of the journey and I just wish I'd done it um, a lot sooner. I think, do you know what, Becky? I think we all feel, you know, I'm going to be sharing my journey later. Mm. And I think we all feel at certain points, we look at people and think, oh, wow, they've achieved them there. How old, you know? Yeah. Um, and you think, well, I could have done that. I should have. I you know, all these yeah. things. But mm -hmm. you know, sometimes one of the biggest things that we can kind of learn is like knowing that we're where we're meant to be at this moment yes. in time is the yeah. perfect time we were meant mm -hmm. to be here. And whatever's brought us here, it's it's just you know, and whatever's in the it's all the right timing. It's all yes. about timing, and this timing's perfect for us. And I think sometimes we've got to be okay with that in your yes. business um mm -hmm. who who's in the business who do you how do you get support so there's there's me um so i'm the sole director because i incorporated the business i love saying that so i'm the sole director of my business and i've got a part-time admin lady so she's currently i got her in to help with a consulting client so they needed um admin support so i subcontract that out so she doesn't help me with bookkeeping, but what I do with that is I started to outsource um, where everybody in the community, in the success lounge, you kind of find the people that have these, they share the same values as you. So um, I outsource my bookkeeping, some bookkeeping areas. I've just done it where I picked up another big client where they're a multi-million a year um, 
client, I haven't got the capacity to do the work, but instead of saying no, I let them know on the on you know on on the onboarding that it wouldn't be me or just me. I'd be outsourcing elements of the work and I'd just be their contact and they were fine. So that's that's been a game changer for me because I'm not ready to take on any more staff yet because I'm exploring passive income streams as well, um, as you both know. But having this subcontract agreement makes it a lot more flexible and the capacity to say yes when, you know, proposals like the one I've just won come along. Mm -hmm. I would have had to say no before. So that works really well. Uh, so far I've not had any bad experience with that um and it's yeah it's working and then I hope to to get my own bookkeeping employees uh but remote as well and w which makes it good I'm, a, I'm I I advertise myself as I'm a full of, I'm a full remote I work from a touring caravan cafe coffee shops you know beach cafes it's just it's almost like living the dream but it feels a little bit surreal, you know. It's it's do people even say that anymore? We you know in the six weeks holidays, um, normally we just have a week break or maybe ten days because we've got we'd have work. Whereas we can just put the touring caravan somewhere, and while the kids are in the pool or playing or on the bikes, I can get my laptop out, and it doesn't have to be heavy client work. But I've got that flexibility. So for probably four out of the six weeks, we won't even be at home. I love it. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I love that I love that this is about options and this is about yes. choice and freedom. Um, yes. You mentioned that you work in the business, so in terms of the work you're doing for your clients, between 20 and 25 hours a week. Yeah. Um, what other work are you doing? So in term, and then you've got support from uh, subcontractors and potentially you'll have employees in the future. Mm -hmm. How much work really, just because I'm a, I'm a working mum too and I like, I get it. I work school hours and, um, but there are inevitably some things that I need to do in the evenings to, you yes. know, sticking over. And you, like me, like to put lots of things on your plate and <laughs> have other ideas going on too. Um, yeah. really like realistically how much more work are you doing around that so for someone who's listening thinking can I really have lots of freedom and just work in the school hours how possible is it and what what do your hours really look like so my it's my hours are I get into my because I've, I've rent an office as well now so I've got um I get there about 9 30 in the morning and I have to leave at 2 30 because you know even though the kids are a bit older I like to be here when they leave and when they get home um, there might be the odd day where I might run over in a meeting and I'm 15 minutes behind them, uh, but that's very important for me. And that's where my client work's done. So, but at home, I it, it's just flexible. So I could probably work, um, well, I don't even clock the hours because a lot of it doesn't feel like work to me. I probably do four, four scheduled in hours of like attending the accountability sessions or I'm actually studying for my finals as well for my SEMA and um, I've picked that back up after a long time so I'm actually on the final final exam for that um but that's just in between you know we might eat dinner together and then the son might go out and play football or be on his VR and the daughter's on uh, the phone to a friend and my laptop just pops open and I'll be playing around on Canva or sitting down and scheduling a few things. So it's not, if you totted it up, I might work 40 hours a week, but it's not client work and it's it's flexible and I do it when, when I want to do it. Uh, and that's the biggest thing. Like today, um, I, I popped in the office, I've popped back. I probably won't go back to work after this, but my clients know I work on a flexible there's no set hours for me um so while the hubby and the kids take the dog out later I'll just pop on and maybe catch up on some emails so it's for me it's about the flex but rather than it being little hours it's just being able to choose for me I choose when I work I choose where I work there are some there are some restrictions there are there is client work to do um <laughs> which sometimes you don't you know you don't always want to do the client work um <laughs> when there's other interesting stuff going on but for me it's definitely the flexibility and not having to to ask anyone you know if we want to go away um thursday night we're going to the f1 for the weekend and i'll be back monday morning and my phone won't ring there's no annual leave if the kids are sick there's no 
who's going to cover my work? I've got to tell the boss the kids are sick again. So if anything, it wasn't the the shorter hours for me. Um, excuse me, some dog um, uh, it, it was that just being in control. And as a working parent, um, that it's the most important thing for us. My my husband's not got that flexibility because he works on site, even though it's on his own business. So um, it's just as and when. Is I it, do feel like I never switch off, but I don't think I would anyway. It's just no. It sounds like you really you. It sounds like you really enjoy what you do. So when you're working, you know, you're saying like the twenty five hours of the client work, but the other bits you're doing is like if you enjoy your business, it feels like yes. fun. It feels like what would you do anyway? Yes. Like you know, as long as as long as the kids are fed, as long as they're happy, yeah. they're going to be going and doing whatever they're going to do anyway. Mm -hmm. And actually, you're choosing to do that work mm. and that kind of thing tell us about so um we've had some questions so what's you know what was your consultancy like um just remind some what what kind of jobs are you doing for consultancy and also what um and do you want to give us a little insight into what this passive income stream is that you're building as yeah. well yeah so the consultancy side although i didn't call it that at the beginning i might add and that was a confidence thing um that was a multiple professional people telling me i was a business consultant um i just what i was doing at the beginning and, and you know still doing a little bit now people would um just recommend me by word of mouth if if people uh, were in trouble and their accounts were a mess and the vat returns were late um they got HR, you know, they got tax audits, uh, final accounts because they've not done the bookkeeping all year and then they've got extensions and, you know, threats have been struck off as director. So people were coming to me through word of mouth um, just to at, at crisis point, really. Um, that's how that started. And it's 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 all data at the end of the day, isn't it? It's, it's all numbers. Um, and I'm very good with masses of messy messy data and, and and just getting that in some kind of order i enjoy that i know that's a bit weird but we all we've all got things that we're really good at um and i think that's what made me good at that so it just inevitably became the the business that that i set up even just things like um the things we kind of assume that everybody knows like how to run a zoom meeting or manage emails um and most of them they were getting themselves in a tiz. They were working from home, you know, instead of having dinner with the family, they were stressed on their laptops. They were all parents and they, they kind of, they were coming to me with the same problems. Yeah, the, the businesses are different and the data are different, but it came down to like a handful of things. Um, they were working parents. They were stressed because they weren't sleeping. They were earning the client money in the day and then having to do this business admin that people underestimate when they set up their own business they're great at the technical side but they don't realize it's a business to run in the background as well and that's where they were falling down it was just a common theme so that was the consulting side so the accounts would be fixed everything would get submitted um liaise with their accountants they generally so probably four off the top of my head actually disengaged with their accountants because of the service that they got on the state that they were in. They're the one asking, can you please just carry on doing this, submitting my VAT returns? And I just didn't and still don't have the capacity. So obviously that's where the bookkeeping side came in. Um, and there were no, it wasn't just accounting either, it was going digital, paper filing, um, email management is massive. Uh, there's, I don't think I have had one client yet where we haven't had to go through that process on clearing somebody's inbox because nobody likes pressing delete. They just keep telling themselves they're going to go through it. Um, meal planning for families, you know, it, it's one of the added stresses of being a business owner, of going home and having to cook dinner. And, you know, it, it, there wasn't any particular area that I helped consult. There's just the end game was less stress. You're now not in chaos. And that was meant to be project work you know you're done um and then on the back of that because there were themes and i knew that how i could help i used i started hearing a lot about passive income um now i'm on the journey um on on a course am i allowed to say what course i'm on 
<laughs> I'm, on, I'm, on the, I'm on the uh one to many with Lisa Johnson, so that's about passive income. Um and I'll be setting up e-courses for parents and just just this modular uh, small bite-sized chunks from everything from mindset how to organize your time because I think people might well a lot of my clients were I've got 40 hours I can work in a week and they were filling themselves with 40 hours of client time well that that's not you can't fill all the, if you've only got 40 hours your client time might be 20 because there's so much more that you need to be doing including learning um, and the development side of it as well and the business growth so that's what I'm doing with the passive income stream I'm creating a course I'm hopefully um, this I've the Facebook's brand new, I've got a Facebook group it's absolutely brand new that's aimed at, um, at working moms really I think I connect with more I mean dads and other parents would be welcome but I'm a working mom so I've got that experience and I know what that feels like. Um, so I'm hoping to build that community and then have this passive income stream of them dipping in and out of these courses that looks at it's not just a business course and it's not just helping somebody be more organized at home. It, it actually, for me, well, for my personal journey anyway, they're interconnected. So, yeah, um, I've actually lost you, Joe. Are yeah. you on? Mute. Yeah, no, that sounds it sounds that sounds amazing, and I think yeah. that there's a lot of need for that. So yes. um, I'm really excited. To yeah, meet. I'm right at the beginning of that journey. It's brand new, um, but I've got you know it, it's exciting to think that I might be able to help people, even just the starting up of the journey with kids, starting a new business. Mm. Um, the things that I said, I wish I could have, I wish I'd have known this then, um, but from somebody that understands what it's like to have kids running around in the background. Um, you know, I've, I've built that comfortable. I have Zooms with clients while the kids are at home. And I'm like, I can meet, I can Zoom with you at 6.30 because it's convenient, you know, flexibility works both ways. But I'll stand and cook tea. And that's quite normal because that's authentically, that's how they met me. We had these conversations. I didn't put on a persona when I was on boarding. They knew my situation and... Um, not a situa situation makes it sound negative, but they knew how I wanted to work and how flexibility and family is key for me. It's really normal now. If you'd have said to me, <laughs> if you're three years ago, you'd have a business Zoom while you were, you know, cooking tea, you'd be like, hey, who does that? Well, I do mm -hmm. that. So, and it's normal. It's absolutely normal. And that also makes the clients more comfortable because a lot of them have a fear of like talking to accountants and professional people. Um, they can be at home with the kids hanging off their neck and the dogs barking and the doorbells ringing and it's it's fine because it's not that's mm. life it's normal um yeah shows you're a normal person makes it more, does it does yeah. Yeah. yeah and that's the feeling of how I feel like I found my niche it's, it's my most comfortable um I'm comfortable working with people like me so yeah that's where that um, comes can I ask Becky um you don't have to like disclose any numbers or anything but your earnings from your business now you're running this flexible business you're not working full-time in your corporate mm -hmm. role yeah are you earning more the same as what you were earning when you were employed is that in the roadmap for you how do you feel comfortable about where you are financially working for yes yourself? yeah um so when I stopped spending money on courses are we talking revenue are we talking profit if I stop spending it like it's monopoly money um yeah I'm happy with that and I've already the revenue's already double of the salary I was earning three years ago for me um and that's not I don't want to say not trying that's not even going out and looking for work um and so for the you, next you, you're so you're two so you, you've got choice so you've doubled yes. the revenue so the money is there but yes it might not be there because you're choosing to in, invest in invest yourself. yeah yes yeah definitely um and and even seeing it like that investing I'm investing my time and my money into that growth and it and it's worked and we, you know I say that to the clients as well paying for bookkeeping services it's an investment um it's going in the right direction I just need to stop spending money <laughs> but they're all they're in they're investing into so I put um I developed a like a hard copy planner so that'll be part of the course where I'm kind of teaching people those skills from you know I've studied professional exams for a long time addicted and now even just 
managing that, mixing the parent element in with it. So I've designed, I had three planners designed so that the money still sat there as a, an investment to, to go with the courses. I'm investing in this passive income course. So, you know, it's not, it's not being frivolous. It's not wasting money. I just think I can, I, we can afford to do that. Now's the time. And then hopefully over the next couple of years, I'll reap the benefits of that. Or I'll draw a line under it and move on to something else. <laughs> Because not everything will work out either. You know, every idea that I have won't always work how I want it to work. But that doesn't mean uh, before I used to kind of look at the time or money invested in something. I think I couldn't possibly, you know, like with the NHS, I've been studying for 10 years. I couldn't possibly walk away. But sometimes you just have to, it's not getting you where you want to be. Um, you just have to draw a line under that. So. We'll see. We might have this conversation in a year and I'm, I don't know, embroidering or hairdressing. <laughs> I, I feel like that's quite unlikely, but I, I, like, I expect you to have pivoted in some way. <laughs> pivot, yeah. Yeah, I do pivot quite a lot. But I'd rather try things and, you know, if it doesn't work, rather than think, I wonder, and I don't want to look back and think if I'd have, I wonder what that would have looked like if I'd have just tried. Mm. Um, you know, I, I mean, I've also got the support from my husband whose mindset only probably recently shifted from this being to the the wife is part-time hobby to actually we're having conversations that I might be able to bring the majority of the money over and he he can step back a little bit financially so that's that's quite empowering for for a woman you know I, I, we, I grew up the my history is I grew up in social housing women around my time and, and and at my class, they just had jobs to make ends meet, two or three jobs. So, you know, to be having the conversations where it, it is actually, it might be very tangible in the near future that I'll be the breadwinner. Bread, do people still say breadwinner anymore? But yeah, and that feels good. That's, I, I, you know, if anybody tells me I can't do anything, especially because I'm female, that gives me a fire in my belly anyway, so... Yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, really important to recognize that, isn't it? Because I think anyone's success journey isn't, you know, no man is an island, as they say. Um, mm -hmm. You've you've had to do that. So who do you think you've had in your network that's helped that's helped you? Because I think we all I think we all sometimes think it's us on our own. But very much, you know, you do have to have mm -hmm. people around you. Who, who's been your support network? In terms of, well, the, the hubby for one just, I don't say let me do it, but. You know, it could have been a lot different if he didn't have the confidence that I could be. He was very confident that I could do this. But it's not actually anybody, friends or family in my personal life. It comes from, um, and I'm not just saying this because I'm on that, it comes from the six-figure community. Because you can have conversations with your friends and family about, well, one, any business, um, but bookkeeping business. And if, if people aren't in your arena, you know, I... I only know one or two people in my friends and family group that have actually got their own business and they understand when I'm talking about the, the issues or the problems or the way it feels or just, you know, it was quite stressful at the beginning. Um, whereas when you come and talk, it did feel quite lonely. I was in the home office. It was just me and the laundry pile and the dog. So it, it felt very lonely. But then when I kind of were in the community, there's a six figure one, but more so the success lounge. And you're going through that journey with other people that are, you know, some are at the same point. And then you've always got that marker in front. There's someone just a slightly a little bit further and they're encouraging you along. It just completely changed everything. Um, being able to message and email and ask for advice, whether it's client work or just the support of you know on your damn days as well as your up days there's somebody that knows how you're feeling and you can have that conversation so it's finding people with the same fire in the belly about the same things and online communities I think are great for that we don't we don't champion them enough I think and that's not even just business I think it's anything if you've got a hobby or um you just something interests you it's not always your friends and family you want support from when I did that with the office, you know, I popped in the group. I went from renting a single room to being, you know, I've rented now the whole floor and I've got four offices. It's empty, 
but that feels amazing for me that's a big step for me nobody was bothered they're like all right that, but when I told the community they're like we get it that's that's fantastic it is a step up um but everybody else you know that I told I didn't tell that many people but once they were like oh yeah well well done <laughs> you know I didn't want that feedback I wanted somebody to be like that's fantastic because that's how it felt well done that's that's amazing um you know I might be needy but I like that I like that feedback no you're, you're not needy <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. and that's it that is the thing isn't it you know not yes. everyone the people here are like it's amazing Becky Claire's just said it's amazing Becky and uh, and we think it's amazing and celebrated with you and I think yeah. that is exactly it that's yeah. you know our family and friends aren't always going to get what mm. we do or why we do yeah. what we do or why it matters or why those milestones mm. are important but people who are living it and going through the same thing as you are going to love that and support yeah. you yeah and it's, it's I suppose to say with, with that as well not if if people haven't yet dipped into that online community I'd, I'd highly recommend it because if you're having a down day or doubt I mean I still you know even recently just think do, do I really want it would just be so it was so much easier to go and work with somebody else you know sometimes you do feel like that um but we wouldn't get the rewards that we're you know that we're all aiming for trying to talk to somebody that doesn't understand they're not going to pick you up they're not going to remind you you know that you're good at this and, and, and what your plans were you know in the success lounge and we we plan together so Zoe you probably know more than most of my family what my goals and plans are for the next six months and you hold us accountable it, it's it's that reminder so it it can feel if anybody's feeling a little bit doubtful or like they haven't got that support network and you just not found them yet it, just reach out there and find people that are like you and you make friends I've made I, I feel like I've made new friends through the six figure you know I'm 40 next year and I I wouldn't have thought that I'd be making new friends at my age it's you don't need I'm not have time for any new friends and then you do you just gel with people um you you've got the same aspirations and you get each other and it's it's been amazing so so that's probably where most of my support comes from. I love that. Oh, Becky, there's so much love for you in the chat. There's all these heart emojis and um, everyone's just like saying like, what a great job you're doing. So oh, thank you, you so job. much for coming and sharing your story and inspiring us and also showing that like, you don't need to be restricted to mm. just sticking with one very clear line of bookkeeping. And it's, it's mm -hmm. great to explore things like those what you know about business is transferable across yes. all of the ideas that you get as an entrepreneur. Yes. So it's, um, it's fantastic. Becky, how can people connect with you, find out more about what you do? Um, well, I've, ju I've just set up a brand new Facebook group. Well, if there's any par parents in there that, uh, that are listening that, that feel like they might be able to benefit from that kind of community, I've got a brand new Facebook group that is called, I'm about to put the link in. I think I called it self-employed overwhelm action group i'm on there there's a picture of me on there and then i have actually just set up a new i'm migrating facebook profiles because i want to optimize it for business so i've just set up a brand new facebook profile so if you type in becky bridges the new one is the one with the mom one thanks jill <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's I, i'll probably be migrating over but yeah if you just search for becky bridges um on facebook i'll be spending most of my time in facebook because I feel like that's where the community building will be on. I have got, you know, my my business is called May I Finance Limited. So I've got websites and social pages for that. But I think if you connect with me through my personal Facebook, if you wanted to, you'll find everything else through there. Fab. Oh, thank you so much, Becky. And thank you, everyone who's been here for this session. It's been amazing to see you. Um, if you are part of Bookkeepers Bootcamp this week, don't forget to come and join us at 6.30, only in the Six Figure Bookkeepers Club. Jo has very kindly agreed to share her story of growing her practice to multi-six figures. And she even told me last night that there were going to be some things I'd never heard before in that conversation. So I'm, I'm, I can't wait to get started with that. So we'll see you at 6.30. Um, thanks, Becky. And thanks, everyone, for being here. We'll see you later. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.